In December 2012, the 51-year-old aircraft carrier USS Enterprise CVN-65 was decommissioned from the U.S. Navy. On the same day, U.S. Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus announced that the next aircraft carrier CVN-80, which was planned for construction, would not be named after any U.S. president as prescribed by the naming rule for American warships, but would be named Enterprise. The minister in his report to Congress explained this decision by saying that in connection with the decommissioning of CVN-65, a situation arose in which perhaps the most famous name of the ship in the history of the American fleet could disappear from the register of U.S. warships, and this is unacceptable. The naming of CVN-80 is the second time in the last 14 that an aircraft carrier has been named for someone other than the President or a member of Congress. The last one was CVN-68 named after Admiral Chester Nimitz. That's how significant this name is in the American Navy, the name Enterprise. Eight ships used in the service of the United States or of the colonial forces of the United States Revolutionary War, six of which were United States Navy ships, have been named Enterprise with a ninth currently under construction. The history of the Enterprise dynasty began back in 1775 on Lake Champlain during the American Revolutionary War. The first Enterprise was originally the English sloop of war George III. She cruised on Lake Champlain and delivered British posts to Canada. In May 1775, a small American force under the command of Colonel Benedict Arnold captured the fort and shipyards at St. John's. As a result of this operation, the George III was taken by the Americans as a trophy. The sloop was then armed with 12 long four-pounder carriage guns and 10 swivels. As the sloop Enterprise, she was in service with the Continental Navy and acted to protect American supplies to New England. Therefore, this ship was not a U.S. Navy ship. The sloop Enterprise participated in the transport of 1,000 expeditionary forces to the Canadian cities of St. John's, Montreal, and Quebec. The sloop later took part in repelling the British invasion of New York and was one of five ships to survive the two-day battle. The sloop Enterprise ended her service on July 7, 1777, when she was burned to prevent her capture by British forces during the evacuation of Continental Army forces from Fort Ticonderoga. What did the first Enterprise look like? Apart from a couple of sketches, one of which is a watercolor plan of Arnold's fleet before the Battle of Valcour Island, which is kept in the Canadian public archives, and her general dimensions little remains. There is also no clarity on the size. Some sources give a displacement of 55 tons, others 70 tons, with a length of 14 meters and an approximate width of 5 meters. The charred remains of the Sloop Enterprise are believed to have been discovered during the construction of the New York State Ship Canal in the early 20th century. Wooden specimens taken from the wreck are kept as souvenirs by local residents and at the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. The second Enterprise was an eight-gun schooner of 25 tons with a crew of 60 men. She was a successful privateer before was purchased for the Continental Navy in 1776. Under the command of Captain Campbell, Enterprise served chiefly in convoying transports in Chesapeake Bay. It was also active in reconnoitering the enemy's ships and preventing their tenders and barges from getting supplies from the shores of Maryland and Virginia. Only meager records of her service have been found. Only commissioned ships of the U.S. Navy carry the USS, United States ship. The Navy also uses the prefix retroactively for ships that would have been commissioned under current practice. Since the first USS Enterprise was still in service, this Enterprise would not have been commissioned by the U.S. Navy and does not use the USS prefix. The third Enterprise was a 135-ton schooner. She operated in the Caribbean, 
the Mediterranean and caught pirates. At the time, counter-piracy operations were a major part of the Navy's mission, as American cargo ships were frequently attacked. This enterprise was the first vessel of the United States Navy to carry the name. In 1800, USS Enterprise caught eight privateers and rescued 11 American vessels in the Caribbean. On August 1, 1800, during the First Barbary War, the USS Enterprise captured the Tripoli Tan ship, Tripoli, off the coast of modern Libya. In 1804, the USS Enterprise participated in a daring operation during which the frigate Philadelphia was burned in the port of Tripoli. The third Enterprise was rebuilt and rearmed several times. She carried from 12 to 14 guns. During the War of 1812, the schooner was converted into a brig. On September 5, 1813, the brig USS Enterprise captured the British brig Boxer. During her final years of service, the USS Enterprise fought smugglers, pirates, and slave traders. The brig USS Enterprise ended her career on July 9, 1823, when she became stranded and crashed on Little Curacao Island in the West Indies. The fourth Enterprise was a 197-ton schooner built at the New York Navy Yard. She was armed with eight 24-pounder and two 9-pounder guns. The schooner was commissioned on December 15, 1831. This ship, from 1831 to 1844, served to protect American interests in various seas and oceans. In 1835, this USS Enterprise made a voyage around the world. In 1844, the fourth USS Enterprise was decommissioned and sold. The fifth Enterprise was a screw sail sloop. She was built at the Portsmouth Naval Dockyard for hydrographic surveys in oceans and coastal areas, as well as in riverbeds around the world. Since 1891, USS Enterprise served as a training ship for Naval Academy cadets. In 1909, this ship was decommissioned and sold. The sixth Enterprise was the 16-gross ton motorboat purchased by the United States Navy in December 1916 for non-commissioned service as a section patrol craft with the assigned number 790 in the second naval district during the period of United States participation in World War I. The prefix USS was not applied to her. The Enterprise, SP-790, was armed with a one-pound cannon and carried out patrol duty. After service in the U.S. Navy motorboat Enterprise was used as a Bureau of Fisheries vessel, harbor tug, and other purposes. The seventh Enterprise was the U.S. Navy Yorktown-class aircraft carrier CV-6. USS Enterprise CV-6 became the most decorated ship of the U.S. Navy during World War II. She earned 20 battle stars, more than any other American warship. USS Enterprise CV-6 participated in more major battles in the Pacific than any other United States ship. These actions included the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Battle of Midway, the Battle of the Eastern Solomons, the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands, various other air-sea engagements during the Guadalcanal Campaign, the Battle of the Philippine Sea, and the Battle of Leyte Gulf. USS Enterprise CV-6 was part of the famous Halsey Doolittle Raid, escorting the aircraft carrier Hornet. On February 1, 1942, aircraft from CV-6 attacked the island of Kwajalein in the Marshall Islands. This attack was the first strike operation of American aircraft carriers. She was also the first American ship to sink a full-sized enemy warship after the Pacific War had been declared when her aircraft sank the Japanese submarine I-70 on December 10, 1941. By the end of the war, her planes and guns had downed 911 enemy planes, sunk 71 ships, and damaged or destroyed 192 more. 
During the war, the Japanese announced three times that the USS Enterprise was sunk in battle. In 1947, the USS Enterprise CV-6 was taken out of service and scrapped as surplus to the Navy's post-war needs. The world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier USS Enterprise CVN-65 became the eighth United States warship to bear this name. Commissioned in 1961 USS Enterprise CVN-65 at 342 meters in length is the longest naval vessel ever built. This aircraft carrier became the first nuclear-powered warship to take part in real combat operations. As part of the U.S. Atlantic Fleet, CVN-65 participated in the naval blockade of Cuba in 1964. USS Enterprise, with a group of America's first nuclear-powered warships, completed a 65-day voyage around the world without replenishing any supplies. In December 1965, CVN-65, part of the U.S. 7th Fleet, took part in the Vietnam War. In 1998, the aircraft carrier took part in the military operation Desert Fox. USS Enterprise CVN-65 holds the record for longest-serving warship in the U.S. Navy. She was retired from the fleet in 2012 after serving for 51 years. Enterprise CVN-80 is the third Gerald Ford-class aircraft carrier being built for the U.S. Navy. Once commission scheduled for 2028, she will be the ninth U.S. naval vessel and third aircraft carrier to bear that name. So, this was the story of one of a dynasty of ships in the U.S. Navy that beginning with an unassuming wooden sloop continues today in a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. The Dynasty Enterprise. <laughs>